pre-order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book project, The Go-Go Offense by Brennan Marion. Now, Coach Marion is the offensive coordinator at William & Mary and takes you through the ins and outs of the most explosive offense that's lighting up the college football fields and school boards in the process. You can pre-order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Now, the release of The Go-Go Offense book is August 25th. Welcome to Football Game Plan, where football makes sense. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Mike McCarthy is your producer today. It's the summertime, and preseason is just around the corner in the NFL, and we'll get you ready for the upcoming 2019 NFL season as we preview the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, as we kick off the season preview, let us take a look at some of the key storylines heading into the season as we go into our four-minute offense. Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz is without a doubt a franchise-level quarterback. Before his multi-ligament knee injury in 2017, he was on course to be league MVP. Lucky for him, he got to horse at Lombardi after Nick Foles won the Super Bowl for them. Unfortunately, injuries have continued to plague Wentz as he's only played in 11 games in 2018. If Wentz can stay out of the trainer's room in 2019, the Eagles will be primed for success. Deshaun Jackson returns to Philly as a dynamic deep threat, even at the age of 32. In his six years as an Eagle, Jackson caught 356 passes for 6,117 yards and 32 touchdowns at 17.2 yards per reception. At the age of 30, NFL skill position players usually begin their decline. Not Jackson. He averaged a whopping 18.9 yards per catch in 2018. With his trademark speed still a factor, look for him to be a potent weapon for Carson Wentz. According to CBS Sports' John Breach, the Eagles have the easiest schedule in the NFC. According to his formula, Philly has the 28th toughest schedule in the whole league. If the season plays out like Breach expects it to, the Eagles are a clear favorite to win the NFC East and secure a playoff berth. The NFL season is never easy, but with the return of Carson Wentz and a bolstered defense with Malik Jackson, look for the Eagles to fly in 2019. The Eagles' backfield is one of the most interesting position groups in 2019. The acquisition of Jordan Howard from the Bears makes it seem like he'll be the starter. However, incumbents Corey Clement, Wendell Smallwood, and Josh Adams all want a clear chance to be the starter. To further complicate the race, the Eagles drafted running back Miles Standers from Penn State to compete as well. Which of these running backs will be the number one next year? Be sure to keep an eye out on that position battle in training camp. It's time to put this team under the microscope and go position by position to see where they stand as we head into the 2019 season. And we'll start on the offensive side of the ball at the quarterback position. Carson Wentz is back, healthy and ready to go for the Philadelphia Eagles. Despite missing some time last year with a back issue and despite never looking fully healthy from the beginning of the season, Wentz still threw for over 3,000 yards, 21 touchdowns to only seven interceptions, and posted his second consecutive 100-plus passer rating. So, needless to say, he was still pretty good last year for Philadelphia. You figure with full health, the potential for him to return to his pre-injury 2017 form is pretty high. But just in case he doesn't and finds himself getting nicked up, I worry about the depth behind him. Nick Foles was a solid QB that proved to be good on short notice and also in spurts. I don't know if I can say the same thing about the current depth chart that's behind number 11. Wentz is an A-plus player in my book, but behind him, it's C-plus at best. In the backfield, Philly wanted to get back to the highly successful running game that they enjoyed two years ago with LeGarrette Blunt, Jay Ajayi, so they went out and traded for Jordan Howard from the Chicago Bears. Now, Howard was the pace setter for that Bears running game, but bought little value to no value in the passing game, which is why Chicago was willing to part ways with him. Now, the Eagles hope that he can be exactly the pace setter they need for their running game in order to balance out the offense. Aside from Howard, the Eagles have four to five guys on this roster that are the same type of backs. They have a bunch of slashers on a depth chart with Corey Clement, Wendell Smallwood, and rookie Miles Sanders out of Penn State. Now, the reason why Sanders stands out to me and was the target of Philly during the draft is because of what he brings to the passing game. To me, it wouldn't shock to see it wouldn't be a shock to see him become their full-time starter by season's end, as it doesn't make much sense to take him off the field if he's that valuable to what you want to do offensively. The Eagles are loaded on a perimeter, in my opinion, with guys that can win at all levels of the field, short, intermediate, and deep down the field. It will be tough for opponents to match up against them on game day. Bringing back the Sean Jackson to team up with all Sean Jeffrey and the versatile Nelson Aguilar should help Wentz put up monster numbers this season. Also, in the NFL draft, they drafted J.J. Arcega-Whiteside out of Stanford, 
who's very similar in style to Jeffrey. Don't count out Shelton Gibson as well, finding a way to make an impact on this offense, in addition to guys like Greg Ward Jr. and Braxton Miller battling it out for final roster spots. The tight end position is where the Eagles are kings. When you have one good tight end, you are very hard to defend. And if you have two, like the Eagles doing Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard, it's next to impossible. Both guys are solid on both ends of offense and really puts a ton of pressure on opposing defenses. And we should see Goddard take even bigger strides this year in his second season within this offense. Along the offensive line, the Eagles do a great job of drafting and developing their own talent. This is one of the strongest units in the NFL, and they were able to bring back a familiar face in Stefan Wisniewski in free agency from the Jaguars and drafted Andre Dillard in the first round out of Washington State to be the heir apparent to Jason Peters at left tackle. But for 2019, when you look at Wisniewski, Dillard, and a guy like Halapuli Vate Vitae, you see very good depth here that could be starter on many other front lines across the league. Now here is how I graded out the offensive skill posi or offensive positions, I'm sorry, for the Philadelphia Eagles. Moving over to the defensive side of the ball and starting up front, the Eagles were able to make a splash by bringing in Malik Jackson, who is a cap casualty for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the hope is that he can provide the same presence up front alongside Fletcher Cox, who is one of the best in the league along the defensive line. All eyes will be on third-year player Derek Barnett out of Tennessee to see if he can become more of an impact player off the edge. Now, he was tremendous in that regard in college, but will finally get his opportunity to be that guy for Philly opposite of Brandon Graham, who is a consistent problem for opposing offensive tackles on game day. Now, the depth here is something that is still working itself out, in my opinion. What growth can they see from 2018 fourth-round pick Josh Sweat and rookie Sharif Miller? On the interior, how healthy is Tim Jernigan? And will they give Trayvon Hester, who was solid for them last season, more reps on the inside? So there is a bunch of names with talent, so we'll see how it all shake out this upcoming season. At linebacker, there are still more questions than answers, in my opinion. I love the range, though, of these guys like Zach Brown and Camu Grugier-Hill. Brown is expected to be a difference maker for them. Nigel Bradham was solid for this defense last season, leading them in tackles. Philly will still be looking for this unit to be much more impactful this upcoming season. If that happens, this will be the difference between a great defense and a very good one. I like what the Eagles have on the back end. When you have injuries, you also have an opportunity for growth, development, and depth building. I think that's what we saw happen for Philly late last season. As guys went down, new guys stepped up and played well, so much so that by the end of the season, their secondary had turned into a significant strength. Fast forward to this year, now they are deep, versatile, and athletic. However, what has to happen more this year is for them to be able to turn the ball over. Too often, more than, often than not, the Eagles left opportunities out there on the field to make plays on the ball or turn the ball over, which could have been a difference in a few games. So this is the second strongest unit, in my opinion, on the defensive side of the ball. Now here is how I graded the Eagles defense from top to bottom. The Philadelphia Eagles offense should be so much fun to watch this year. They do a great job of just moving the football down the field. I know the running game is a big question mark coming into the season, but the fact that they are able to move the football with the passing game with their receivers and Carson Wentz, their tight ends, is very impressive. Now, in this situation, I'm going to show you how they can utilize their personnel to get speed on the field. Now, in no way, shape, or form, in God's green earth, am I advocating taking Zach Ertz or Dallas Goddard off the field. They can even utilize them in this formation. But for this video, I'm talking about putting their speed on the field, their receivers on the field to generate a big play deep down the field. Here's what I'm talking about. We're going to call this our sprint package. So you have your rookie running back in the backfield and Miles Sanders out of Penn State. We're going to put the two young guys. We're going to put Nelson Aguilar and J.J. Arcega Whiteside on one side. We're going to put Deshaun Jackson right here in the slot along with Alshon Jeffrey on the opposite side. So they have great personnel. Um, they can go empty if they want to and put Sheldon Gibson out there if, if they want to maybe another uh, put the tight end out there. Either one, pick your poison. They have great personnel. But let's say they want to get four receivers on the field because they're facing a team that doesn't have four good corners. So they're going to be able to take advantage of what they have at their disposal. Case in point, running back number one, we're going to send him fake the Take the read, zone read, bring him through the line and out in the flat safety valve for Carson Wentz. What we're going to do is run a sort of a switch route here with Deshaun Jackson and also uh, Elshon Jeffrey. We're going to bring Jackson up and down the sideline, 
speed kills. He's going to get deep. Hopefully takes the safety away. Alshon Jeffrey replaces the tight end by giving him a big body over the middle of the field. Here's where it can get interesting. People underestimate J.J. Arcega Whiteside's ability to run routes, release, get off the line of scrimmage, and get deep down the field. We're going to have him just run a straight takeoff. And what I like about Nelson Aguilar, he's the jack of all trades. He can do, he can do it all. Just send him on an option route. Give him the freedom to, to cut it short, cut it out, take it up, round it out, round it in. He has the freedom to do whatever. Carson Wentz does a great job of reading what the receiver does and does a great job of getting rid of the football with solid anticipation. So you can trust a guy like Nelson Aguilar to run an option route. Give him that freedom. He's a guy you want with the ball in his hands pretty quickly, and he can do things after the catch. But you want to have your big receiver, J.J. Arcega Whiteside, go deep down the field on the takeoff, speed going down the field, big bite over the middle of the field, and you're running back as your outlet. So utilizing a sprint package, so to speak, could put the Philadelphia Eagles in a great situation, an even better situation this year, to match up against those secondaries that don't have the firepower that they have on offense. One of my favorite defensive backs on this Eagles roster is cornerback Avante Maddox. Now, we saw him last year come on strong toward the end of the season, and we also saw him moonlight as a safety, but he has that flexibility to play outside, play inside in the slot, or also back deep as a safety. And because of that, I like his ability this year as a versatile move piece within that secondary. You can get creative in how you utilize him. Maybe sometimes you may want to go cloud coverage where you have him playing off of you know the corners. You have the safety down low, cornerback playing high, and you're playing sort of a, a zone here. So what you want, this corner is going to be responsible for a hitch uh, and also slant. So you can get aggressive in, in your short area coverage. He's responsible for the curl, um, and he's going to take, you know, he's going to drop back into a deep third. So you can have this corner play extra aggressive and this is something that Avante Maddox does exceptionally well. He can play extra aggressive here, jump routes, pick it off, and take it to the house. Or you can put him inside and have him play the curl where he's able to read that quarterback, keep his eyes right where that quarterback is, jump in between the passing lane, and take it off. He's also a solid tackler. So, yeah, you can trust him both short. But back deep, if you're passing a guy off deep, you have a guy that is apt in coverage, has great ball skills, and has the ability to make a play and get the ball back for your, for your offense. So, Avante Maddox, to me, is a guy that you would want to move around that secondary to try to create optimal matchups against the opposing offense and hopefully generating a turnover. The Philadelphia Eagles up next. I actually like what Carson Wentz is going to do this year. And I think he can have a big fantasy football season. Used it a couple of times and used it again, sponsorship. They need to justify letting go the guy who actually won them big games. Carson Wentz has won them zero big moment games. If you want to call the seventh week of the regular season a big moment game, feel free. But there have been no big games that Carson Wentz has won after week 13. There have been none. Find me the game. Find me the game. Find me the playoff win. Find me the playoff win where he's a starting quarterback. Find me the big win when they need to get wins down the stretch and they ended up shutting them down so that they could get to the playoffs. I got time. So anyway, but I think he'll have a good fantasy year because they'll sponsor him. They'll make him run, make a run for MVP for him by force feeding touchdowns and taking them out of the running back's mouths. Speaking of the running back position, because of how Doug Peterson plays it, I can't trust anyone on this roster. Um, I can't trust Miles Sanders, who's been slated as the projected starter. I can't trust Jordan Howard, who I actually think will start game one. I can't trust any of them because I don't think any of them are going to get enough touches every week to be justifiable. Much like last year when I said, do not draft anyone out of this backfield before the eighth round, whether it's JJ or whoever, you can't. Guess what? You can't do it again. You literally can't. Seventh round is the highest I would take one, and I still couldn't justify it to myself. It'll probably be the eighth round or later again. Alshon Jeffrey. There's a clear disconnect between Alshon Jeffrey and Carson Wentz. I don't care what anyone says. I've watched it. Too good of a player not to get the targets that he should be getting, but whatever. Maybe he'll get solved this year. Likelihood is it won't. Deshaun Jackson. He's back, and I think he'll be better on the real football field than in the fantasy football field, unless you're doing the best ball thing, which most people are not doing. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, best ball is just basically you draft a team. It's really good to take chances on guys who are super talented because 
when you get that Albert Wilson type game or when you get one of those big games where someone has six catches for 205 yards and three touchdowns, it's usually guys you would never start. Best ball, they're automatically started. So Deshaun Jackson's that perfect type of player because he'll probably go three straight weeks with two receptions for 14 yards and no touchdowns and then seven for 168 and three touchdowns. Nelson Aguilar, I don't think he'll get the targets. I think most of the targets will go to the tight ends in his offense. It's just my opinion. Speaking of which, Zach Ertz and actually Dallas Goddard, I think both are good enough to be drafted. Zach Ertz probably in the top four rounds. Dallas Goddard probably in the 15th or 16th round. And then Jake Elliott is a kicker. Listen, you want to be in an offense that's going to move the ball, this offense will move the ball. Tori Anthony here, bringing you the best bets for the Philadelphia Eagles. Last season, the Eagles went 9-7, finishing second in the division. They dropped both of their games to Dallas, handing them the division. The Eagles are hoping to have a more explosive offense this season after adding Jordan Howard and drafting Miles Sanders out of Penn State and J.J. Arcega-Whiteside out of Stanford. You can get the Eagles to win the division right now at minus 112. This division is going to be between the Cowboys and the Eagles. Whoever wins it is probably going to be around 10 to 11 wins. I feel it's safer to take them to win the division than to take them over 10 wins. Regardless, at mon minus 182, I'm taking the Eagles to make the playoffs again. Doug Peterson has been phenomenal with this team since taking over. And the team to repeat the success next season, I believe it's going to happen. Troy Anthony for Football Game Plan. Follow me on Twitter, at Football Fandom, replacing the O's with zeros. I'm David Hasegan, and this is Huddle Up with Hasegan. We'll be talking quick fire takes of the Philadelphia Eagles, starting with this year's breakout candidate. Emery, who stands out for you? Well, we know Carson Wentz loves his tight ends, and we know Zach Ertz is a star. I think right. this is the year Dallas Goddard becomes the star as well. So I mm -hmm. look for him to have a breakout season. On the defensive side, Avante Maddox, the cornerback, defensive back out of Pitt. Um, he played corner last year, slot outside. He also played safety. I think this is the year we see him take another big jump and, and build off what he did last season. A lot of people talking about Andre Dillard. Is he going to be a big impact rookie for the Philly offense this season? Could be, but I would go in the backfield. Miles Sanders, they drafted him out of Penn State to be their guy that can that can be out there on passing downs. We know Jordan Howard isn't the best receiver coming out of the backfield. Doesn't really pose a threat in the downfield passing game. Sanders can do that, but also Sanders gives you that ability to hit the home run, being able to make guys miss. Defensively, I think TJ Edwards is one no one is talking about, inside linebacker. I think there's an opportunity for him to have an impact, not only just on special teams, but in the regular defense. I liked him coming out of Wisconsin. Let's talk about X factors for the Eagles this season. They're going to have to try to get back to the top of this division. Who do you like? Well, Jordan Howard has to be the biggest X factor because when you look at Philadelphia last year, they didn't really have the running game to be successful. Right. They, they were able to move the football with some, some aspects of the running game or the run elements of their game, but they don't have that guy that really is a threat. They brought in Howard to be that guy. He has to be that guy in order for this offense to really push forward. Defensively, Zach Brown, the inside linebacker, I thought he's a, a tremendous talent, great athlete. He kind of gives them someone that they can count on on the interior. But those are the two guys I think will have to be the X factors for Philadelphia. Who are the training camp surprises for Philly this season? Ayasua Opeta, the offensive lineman from Weber State. Nicely done with that name. Yeah, he, he's a guy that can play tackle, guard, even center. And we know Philadelphia has one of the better offensive lines in the division and also in the NFC and maybe in right. the NFL. And they're gonna, they, they brought in Dillard from Washington State in the first round, good player. Uh, you pet a, a, o, o pet, I'm sorry, is a guy that can do multiple things up front. He's gonna have to have a role as a swing player along that offensive line. I think he's gonna surprise some. And Trayvon Hester, defensive li lineman out of Toledo. Big fan of his game. I think he has pass rushing potential from the inside. So being a part of a defensive rotation in Philadelphia, which is one of the better defensive lines in, in the nice. NFC, I, I think Hester is gonna be one that's gonna surprise. What do you like and what concerns you about the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, the Eagles have everything that, that you need to be successful. They got the yeah. quarterback that they trust. They got good threats downfield, both intermediate and deep. They got two good tight ends. Yeah. Uh, offensive line is good, defense is excellent. So they've gone to the Super Bowl two years ago. They were a one drop pass away from being in the NFC Championship game last year. So they're ready made to make a run. So that's what gives you optimism. The concern is if Carson Wentz doesn't, doesn't be a part of the party, uh, for the third year in a row in the playoffs. They have to ha get to the playoffs with their you know, starting quarterback and wins because right now there's no Nick Foles to save the season. 
and Wentz has to be healthy. Now, to his credit, I thought he rushed. They, they're, I don't, I don't want to say they rushed him because I know what that is like when you have the injury and the guy is playing well, the competitor in you wants to get back out there and say, hey, I'm healthy. But I thought he rushed himself out there, which is why he ended up getting hurt again. So he's healthy now and he's going into the season as an unquestioned guy with no, no smoke swirling around him. But I think him not being healthy could really derail everything that this Eagles team, uh, you know, potentially has on the table this year. Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here, and joining me now is fellow football game plan analyst Troy Anthony for this Four Downs with the Czar segment, continuing our preview of the Philadelphia Eagles as we take a look at the road to the Super Bowl for the Eagles, and you look at the biggest thing I believe that can put them on the right track, Carson Wentz staying healthy. Now, if you go all the way back to his senior season at North Dakota State, it was the wrist, his rookie year, he had the the uh, ribs in the preseason, but he was able to play the full 16. Last, the previous year was the ACL. This year, I thought he rushed back and it was the back issue that he had. If he can stay healthy, I think this is a team that's already shown that they have enough offensively, especially on the perimeter, to make it happen along with their defense. So Wentz has to stay healthy in order for this team to get to the Super Bowl. Definitely has to stay healthy, but for with him staying healthy, I need more production from their wide receivers. You can't take a team to the Super Bowl with your leading receiver being a tight end, and then your second receiver only having about 700 yards, and your third receiver maybe 400, 500. I need Nelson Aguilar to step up. I need J.J. Arcega-Whiteside to come in and do work. I need Alshon Jeffrey to produce. That drop in the playoffs last season was a heartbreaker. He lost in the game. He needs to come in this year with a chip on his shoulder, lead these receivers, and expect more out of them for that team. Well, you also look at Deshaun Jackson. How will he fit into this offense as well, the deep threat? And it's up to Wentz to, you know, he has to get the ball to the receivers. We know he does a great job getting the ball to the tight end, but he has to get the ball to the receivers. I look at the backfield. They went out and spent a lot of money or invested a lot in the backfield. They got Jordan Howard coming over from the Chicago Bears. Now, whether you like Jordan Howard or not, he's a guy that has rushed for a thousand yards in two out of his three seasons as a pro. Whether he can br bring to them what uh, LeGarrette Blunt had and he'll brought to the table or what um, they got from Jay Ajayi. Maybe that can work, but they need that to happen. Miles Sanders, the rookie out of Penn State, can they get something from him? They expect him to be their versatile move piece, the Alvin Kamara of their offense. They do need him to be that guy because they have to be able to run the football. If you're a, a guy like Carson Wentz, and this is my personal opinion, you can't ask Wentz to go in there and throw the ball 30 to 35 times a game. To me, that's playing losing football. Balance is what can help keep him healthy, keep the Eagles explosive, and they need that running game to really step up because if it's a one-dimensional offense with Wentz in that passing game, that's easy to defend, and that takes a lot of what they can potentially do uh, moving forward because we look at when they went to the Super Bowl with Nick Foles, everyone talks about Nick Foles, but their running game was able to close out games. They ran the ball really well. They have to do that this year if they want to get to the Super Bowl. Speaking on balance, I'm going to need to see a little bit more balance on the defensive side. Their running defense is okay. Their passing defense was horrendous last season. They finished 30th in the league. There was multiple times throughout the season that secondary was banged up. I'm going to need them to stay healthy. I remember there was a two-game two stretch where both starting cornerbacks and at least one safety was out. So I'm going to need to see them more healthy. I need the trainers to get involved to get that defensive secondary more healthy because that pass, that secondary needs a huge improvement this season if they're going to go anywhere. Well, I'll say this. That secondary did improve over the course of the season because of those guys that were getting a lot of reps to play. And when you have injuries, the bright side of that is that you are now building depth. Yeah. And they were able to show showcase that in the playoffs against New Orleans. That secondary was giving the Saints receivers some problems uh, throughout the course of that game. You got guys that can really make plays on the ball. They're active, they're versatile, they can play inside or out. But I agree with you. Health-wise, now you have a, a deep and talented unit, but they have to remain that way throughout the season if the Eagles want to get to the Super Bowl. I have the Eagles finishing second in the NFC East. I think this is a very dangerous team moving forward. You talk about getting a healthy Carson Wentz with an improved running game with a very good defense in the secondary that now has health and confidence. This team can get into the playoffs and find themselves making a deep run this upcoming winter.
So that's it for this season preview. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to Football Game Plan Podcast on iTunes, where you can find our NFL All 32 podcast, our fantasy football starting lineup, as well as our scout team podcast, and leave us a five-star rating. Also, subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Finally, every Thursday and Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, be sure to check out the Football Game Plan show on the Game Plus Network. Check with your cable provider for channel listings.